I have loved and admired his films, as I'm sure most of you have as well. It is Mr. Martin Scorsese, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Enormous pleasure for me to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Let, let's just remind people of some of the movies, the fine, fine films you've written. Goodfellas, of course, mm -hmm. Mean Streets, mm -hmm. Taxi Driver, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, Raging Bull. Yes, yes. Dude, Where's My Car? That wasn't one of yours, No, was dude, it? No, 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 I wanted to do that. <laughs> but I, I wasn't. They know. were going to make a sequel to that, apparently, saying, seriously, dude, where's really, my car? Where's my car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which I'd love to see. Um, you've made, I think, is it over 25? I think features? so. I've stopped counting. I don't know. And in, the, you know, in that group, I would have thought there were five, six, maybe seven that are generally uh, and widely regarded to be actual classics, classics of modern cinema. Uh, I, would, I would like to think so. Yeah. I mean, apparently people have said that. So. I think so. And, then, and, and even man, and the other ones, there's not one turkey amongst them. I mean, uh, some might disagree, but, but you I kind of like to hear that. Well, no, I don't <laughs> believe there is one. Which one do you think might be? What, which I would know. be the... I, I, some, you know, in America... The King of Comedy was, was highly reviled, and in England it was loved. That's an incredible film. Yeah, That's that an, a remarkable movie. In England movie. it would received awards, and it was just very, very, yeah. and very heartening. Like, but is that weird for you? Can you not then anticipate how an audience is going to react? Never. I, I have no idea. I, I, uh, I have no idea what, the, as I say, the pulse of the public. We sort of get a picture together and somehow and got the money for them and made the movies. Let's have a, a think about some of the movies you've made. You've made gangster films, of course. You're very yes, well known have, for that, yeah. kind of the modern yeah. mobster movie. Mm -hmm. You've made comedies, mainly black comedies, but you've made a, yes, a couple very of very dark comedies. You've made uh, period dramas. Yes. Uh, your new movie that we'll chat about in a second is, of course, a biographical picture based mm -hmm. on the life mm -hmm. of Howard Hughes. Uh, what about science fiction? You've never made a kind of special uh, effects kind of blockbuster movie. I know. I'd love to. I'd love to. I would I, love to see well, you do that. Um, you know, in the 70s, it was Spielberg and Lucas and myself, and they did it, they do it so well, mm, yeah. you know, the story would have to be really interesting for me. But what's great is, of course, is that you, there aren't that many movies now. I mean, a lot of the films that are being made are rely very heavily on special effects, rely yes. very heavily on a high yeah. premise. And your yeah. movies tend to be much more about characters, of course. Yes, yes, definitely character-driven. Which is getting Always. rare, I think. Very rare. Do you despair with the state of American cinema, or do you think it's in good health? I think uh, what I'm nervous about is that, uh, is that there are, are a, a number of very, very good young filmmakers coming up in America. Wes Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson, Alexander Payne did Sideways. Um, and uh, I would love to see the amount of attention and amount, let's say, the larger budgets go to them if they need it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And then there's, there's too much of a big split now. The, uh, the other films are either, I'm, I'm sure a picture like uh, Wes Anderson's film, The Life Aqu Aquatic, costs about 50 million yeah, in yeah. America. That's a mid-range. Yeah. Um, wow, that's, that's mid-range, yeah, mid 50 range, million. Mid-range, Whereas these other pictures that are like giant, you know, with animation and everything, is maybe they admit to 200 million. They admit to that. Wow. So you can imagine. So how much they're costing? Who, no man knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that, but that's kind of terrifying, I thought, dealing with those kind of figures and knowing that ultimately, as a director, the, the, the return on that money rests with you, of course. Yes, that's, that's why. I mean, I mean I, in this film, Aviator, I got as close as I could to a story that has the use of visual effects yeah. that is really character-driven. I mean, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. I'm, I'm looking forward now to going back to... Uh, a more uh, scaled down project. Well, congratulations once again on a fabulous movie. I saw the Aviator last Thank week. You. It's incredible. And there's a, one particular scene in the middle we're going to talk about in a minute that just blew me away. But bearing in mind that we all like a trailer, we're going to show the trailer for oh, it now just to get us all excited. This is, uh, this is the Aviator, ladies and gentlemen. It's got everything, hasn't it? <laughs> it's got everything. Although, you know what? I'm saying it has everything, but the only nudity in the film, I believe, is male nudity, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I would like you to do something about that in your next picture. Okay, I'm going to try. <laughs> Although it is Leonardo DiCaprio, and I think that will probably sell a few tickets. It might. Now, Leo DiCaprio, this is the second movie you've made with yes, him. Yes, yes. Uh, is he taking the kind of uh, place in your movies that, that De Niro had before? Because you made, what, eight films with, with Robert De Niro? eight films together since 1973. Well, that's yeah, a lot of work, isn't it? And so DiCaprio, is he your kind of, well, I don't know if Muse is the it's, right word, but... I, we, we, we worked very long periods on, on gangs in New York together. And yeah. during that process, we got to know each other somewhat. We had similar tastes. I mean, I'm 32 years older than him. Yeah. But I feel a kind of connection with him. He does with me, too. He likes my movies a lot, which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and um, I'm about the same age as his father is. And uh, we like the same sorts of music. And so ultimately... Uh, uh, when this project, the Howard Hughes project, came into my hands, we, he had already developed it. And, so he was, uh, he was already he was keen a, on the idea. He, yeah, he was already into it. Right. And I said, well, I, when I started reading it, it says The Aviator. They didn't tell me what it was about. I looked, I turned this uh, page over and I said The Aviator. I'm, I'm rather phobic about flying. 
<laughs> well, this is not a movie to watch if you are yes. scared of flying. Well, it has, you know. Yeah. And so the next page, and then I realized, was Howard Hughes directing Hell's Angels, which was a great film. Yeah. A yeah. great film. And I was really... Then I got hooked. It, uh, it's an incredible performance by him as oh, well. He's, he's remarkable. Well, I didn't know... You know, he's one of those guys where I've enjoyed seeing him in movies, but you wonder whether... It's like when you saw Johnny Depp in his early career, and you think, oh, OK, yeah. he's an incredible screen presence. Go, yeah. He has charisma, and you wonder, is he really... Has he got the chops to be a proper screen actor? Yeah. And I think Leo DiCaprio, certainly in this, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's the full range he shows here. It really, it really does. I mean, when I saw him in, in this boy's life when he was 16 years old yeah. and uh, Robert De Niro told me about him really he said watch this kid he's gonna be very interesting and then uh, a film called what's eating Gilbert grape yeah 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 and I said he's amazing yeah. you know well he's I, terrific in this he really yeah. is uh, it's a shame he's so unattractive because it's, if he was a, a good-looking fella he no, could probably I, be a big star <laughs> <laughs> you know? I keep telling you yeah, that I yeah know. he should have surgery absolutely absolutely um, before we move on from the aviator though some of the other performances in it are, are well worth mentioning yes. and I suspect we'll be hearing their names when it comes down to Oscars um, Kate Blanchett in particular yes, is Kathleen yes, Hepburn. Yeah. I would be very surprised if she doesn't get nominated. Yes, yes, I, I hope so. I think she's an extraordinary actress. And uh, when I saw her in Elizabeth, yeah, uh, uh -oh. I, I, it was amazing to me. And uh, then she was in a film called The Gift, and then The Talented Mr. Ripley. And I, I didn't even know it was the same actress. I yeah. thought it, it just came with the film in a way. I just uh, um, and so when I thought of when I thought of who could who could even have the audacity to attempt to try playing Catherine Hepburn or had the intelligence really. Uh, she came to mind immediately, yeah. and, uh, and then she, uh, she took it on. Okay, there's a scene in the movie which really is quite breathtaking, and it's exciting, and it's thrilling, and, it, you know, and, and it's horrific at the same time. There's a crash involving how to use... Now, we're curious, when you're shooting a scene like that, that must take, I would have thought, more planning than any other scene. Oh, yeah, those are the first scenes I planned. But, and are they things you really look forward to doing, you know, you're going to shoot the big action scenes or yes, the violent yeah, scenes? Yeah, or the, yeah, yeah. Well, that must be... It's yeah. like, having, like having a toy box to play with, isn't yeah, it? That, that is. It okay, is like, yeah. let's, so this is just before the big crash happens, and you'll get a taste of it from me. Uh, and the scene after that, yeah. uh, you know, and he doesn't quite make it, and it's an incredible moment. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be one of those scenes that you're going to get on DVD and watch again and again. Yeah, I suspect. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, um, it opens uh, in London on the 26th of December, all over the rest of the country from January the 6th. I'm sure it'll be a, a big hit for you. It, I would imagine it must be it must be fun being you, Martin. I hope it's fun being you because I imagine you have such a reputation. What young actor or actress, what old actor actress, is not going to return your call, is not going to want to work with you? Do, do you ever get turned down by people? Oh, yes. Who's turned you down? Well, don't, some people... Come sometimes. on! No, sometimes... Come on! It wasn't their fault, it wasn't their fault... Scorsese, but you, say, you, so don't, you don't want to mess with me. You, you, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have Pesky with you now. I'm not oh, scared Joe, of you. Joe's not here, I know, I know. Joe, is he a scary guy in real life, Joe Pesky? Joe's pretty tough. Yeah, these guys you work with, I mean, when you see them on screen, they do such convincing portrayals of basically kind of like aggressive lunacy. Yes. And uh, you kind of think, because De Niro, he's nuts. And he, is he just nuts? I get the feeling he is nuts. Oh, no, no, not really. He's very yes, sweet, he's nuts. very he compassionate must be nuts. man. Very, he's very... seriously nuts. We can all tell he's nuts. No, he's very calm. He's actually You're saying that because you're scared man. of him. I can Absolutely. see that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were younger then, too, you know. Because you've known him... How old were you when you first met him? I what first met him, we were hanging around, as they say, in my old neighbourhood. I grew up down in the Italian-American neighbourhood in, uh, um, uh, down Elizabeth Street in New York, in the lower New York, and uh, uh, I would hang around with a, a bunch of guys, and he would hang around with another bunch of guys who were 16 years old. Yeah, wow. And then met again later, when I started making movies and, and he started acting. Did you know, so at that stage, I mean, I, I imagine this was a fairly kind of like what we would call in this country a working class. Uh, yes, very much so, yeah. So kind yeah. of weird that two of the kind of, you know, biggest creative names in American modern cultural life both came from this same neighbourhood. Yes, and the neighbourhood's very changed now. It's all very chic. Yeah. So yes, what, what was it about your guy, you guys, your environment or whatever that drove you that you both... To get out. To get out of it, basically. Yeah. To, uh, as my mother and father said, to move on out. Get, as my mother used to say, better yourself, so to speak, and, and move, out of, the, move yeah. out of this environment, really. It was a pretty rough environment. And presumably you both always loved movies, I would have thought. I, that was my only outlet. I had terrible asthma as a child, and from the age of three on to about, about now. And uh, <laughs> pretty much about now. And uh, they, would, they didn't know what to do with me. Working class family, you know, never, uh, not, not educated. Yeah. Doctor would say, don't let them run, don't let them laugh. Don't do so I would take me and put me in a movie theater. Yeah, and you'd just watch films. And watch films and, you know. Because, well, I've, I've read interviews with you. I've read uh, notes you've written on other people's films. You really do have an understanding of American cinema, I think, which is second to none. Mm. I mean, apart right. from maybe the notes I've read from Billy Wilder, I would have thought you two guys have a oh. grasp of cinema which no one else has. It's incredible. Billy Wilder was great. Yeah. I, I hope you're going to work with Mr. De Niro again. Do you have any We're plans? hoping to. We're trying to check in and see that at our age now if we could, you know, take, a, take another journey in a yeah. way and see if we can find something new. How about if he plays an older man and you could have a younger, maybe you could play a British man and there could be someone playing him when he was a boy? This is, this is beginning to, yeah, it's yeah. beginning to look good. You, you, are you looking at me? Yes, I am. Are you looking yes, at I me? Yes, I am. <laughs> because there is no one else here. There he is, I know, exactly. That's right. I'm, I make you laugh, I'm a comedian. Hey, do you get... Uh, 
Do you get people quoting those scenes? Because you, you, your films have had several scenes which have just burned themselves into the consciousness. There's that one, and there is, of course, Joe Pesci doing that. What, you think I'm funny? Yeah. You think I'm funny? Yes. You think I'm funny? Yeah, yeah. I make you laugh. I'm a comedian. You think he's back in the room, don't you? It's uncanny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's amazing. Those scenes, yeah. and also, you know, the other guys, with Harvey Keitel oh, as well, Harvey's another wonderful. incredible oh, performer. Harvey is great. Harvey, we started in 1964 together. Wow. You know, I saw Harvey last that week. That was, who's, uh, who's that knocking my who's door? That, on? Yeah, 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 and then at Mean Streets, and uh, in the Mean Streets was written, the character was written for him, and then in Taxi Driver, he plays a... Uh, one of, the, one of the characters Incredible there. in that yeah, as well. Yeah. Incredible. Um, can I ask you about your eyebrows, Martin? Because they are really quite something. Thank you. Thank you. The eyes of them. Thank you. These, they, they've been trimmed. Wow, when you first came out, I thought, oh, my God, he's got a beetle on his face. I'm going to have to... I'm gonna, it's just, look at that. There's a picture of you. You have had them trimmed. Look at that. Oh, yeah, no, I think they've been trimmed. Wow, but that's quite a look. Is this a tradition in your family? Well, there's, there's our most famous eyebrow wear, probably. That was Mr. Dennis Healy. No, I'm trying to get that. Many years ago. Now, here's the guy I think you most look like. Oh. Do you remember him? Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, um, I cannot believe, and this is remarkable, I'm sure you'll be surprised then, that, that Martin Scorsese has not been honoured with an Academy of Motion Pictures Art Oscar. He's never won an Academy Award, which strikes me as being a travesty, if nothing else. Uh, I can't imagine you're not going to get nominated for The Aviator. I would hope you are. I, I would be nice to be nominated. I, I, for me, the nominations now mean very much for the film. If the film says uh, eight nominations, five nominations, Academy, people might go see it. That yeah. helps. And that, I'm just thinking of the next picture to make and the one to make after that, because but the I time is going. But, you, but the Goodfellas, which is, you know, one of the greatest <laughs> movies ever made, it lost out, can you believe it lost out, to Dances with Wolves? <laughs> Kevin <Language>. Costner. <laughs> Language. Language and violence. Do you yeah. not know someone who could just have him taken uh, care I... of? <laughs> Are you not con I thought you were connected. I know. I You're know. not a made not, man? Not really, no. Uh, <laughs> try not to be. Can't you get one of those Sopranos to pay him a visit? <laughs> right? They're in New Jersey. It's a different It's OK. Thing. He got his, yeah. uh, he got his uh, rewards. He went off to make Waterworld. That's, oh that's good enough. <laughs> well, you had, to, you had to have gills, for God's sake. <laughs> Actually, I don't mind that movie. That's quite a fun film. <laughs> who do you like? Uh, who, who do you have your eye on now? Who are the young up-and-coming actors and actresses who you'd like to work with? Well, there are, there's, some, there's a number of... Leo and I are going to work together again in the next picture. Oh, and what is that going to be? That's a, a, another... A, well, I'm going to have to say it's another gangster film. Fantastic. Well, you see, we love you making gangster movies. So don't, don't be even mildly apologetic about that. Sorry. It takes place in Boston this time. Boston. It starts shooting in April. Great. Well, I'm available, so I'm okay. looking forward I'm to... Uh, doing that. Got it. <laughs> you know when you sign the form to come on the show, you know there's a little bit at the bottom saying you have to put me in it. I understand, I understand, they told me. Just, just to walk on in the background. I know, okay. I just wave. <laughs> uh, do you never get tempted to put yourself in your films? I do. Do you? Oh, not yeah. In every one? Pretty much. I, I, I was just the voice of the projectionist in this That's one. That's not the same. A voice isn't the same. No, I've, I've acted in, in those pictures, yeah. Like Hitchcock? Well, in a sense, because sometimes, sometimes the person who's supposed to do the scene doesn't show up or whatever. What happened <laughs> in the early days, you've you got to do it. I yeah. just do the same with my mother and father, threw them in. Fantastic. You know. Oh, yeah, because your mum is in Goodfellas. She's in she? Goodfellas. She yeah, does the, right. yeah, she has the dinner scene with Joe Pesci and Bob De Niro. That's right, yeah. She doesn't yeah. kill anyone. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fabulous thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to let Mr. Scorsese go, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed meeting him as much as I have. Mr. Martin Scorsese, thank, thank you, Martin. Thank you. That is a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And what well are the movies? Thank, thank you. Thank thank you. Thank 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 you. Martin Scorsese. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wouldn't it be great to meet Martin Scorsese? You know we have the same birthday? Yeah, not the same year. Obviously, I'm a lot younger, but I mean, we have the same. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mine is not so